So, can Piccoletta be competitive with other mages for damage? In this video, I want to find this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Frederica, Narv, and Piccoletta, and uh, I might as well include Corentin because he's over here. We're going to see how much damage each of them deals. Um, there are, everyone's going to catch Battery, uh, which kind of puts Piccoletta at a slight disadvantage because she can out damage mages in general. Like, gener like she can definitely out damage a Narv um, if he doesn't have a battery because she can just use abilities, like use her fire stones and her ice stones for free every single turn. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have each mage try to hit as many enemies as possible using any spell, uh, using all the damage boosts. I'll go over the items they all have in a second. But the first thing we'll do here is we will double items to battery everyone. So Piccoletta will actually not get an advantage from this because she doesn't. It doesn't matter if she has battery because she can use a, a, like a fire stone and ice stone every turn. All right. So here are the items we're running. Piccoletta is running two speed bracelets to get more actions in. Narv is running two magic bracelets. Frederica is running two magic bracelets. And Crinton, I'm actually not sure what his items are. He's running a speed and HP. Okay, that's fine. That's usually what I run on him anyways. Um, the reason for this is his speed is bad. So it helps, and HP, he gets he gets one shot a lot, so <laughs> it's like a necessity for me. Uh, and then for Frederica, she can get one shot too, so. Alright, so let me just type out one more thing. We're going to type out Corentin, just core. Alright, so we're going to test damage. We're going to see who gets the most damage, who damage carries. We're going to try to hit as many things as humanly possible. So let's get to it. Alright, so right away, we can target weaknesses. And the big upside of Piccoletta is she's way more durable than most, like, mages in terms of physical. They're usually tankier to magic, but let's see what she hits. Alright, 141 times 2. So, so far, Piccoletta has done 280 damage. I wish the game had, like, post-game stats, but unfortunately we don't get that. So we're just gonna kind of have to add it as we go. Now, Corintin, he should have access to hit at least two targets. And some of them might be weak to yeah some of them are weak to ice so he should be able to as long as everyone's hitting around two targets this is a pretty fair test and then what i'll have sarah noah do is just shielding stance him and kind of keep distance to some degree all right so this will cast on wait did he just pass that may just pass that's weird that's i don't understand why he would do that <laughs> all right so if i move current in he actually might straight up die so I probably should have positioned Serenoa like here and then moved Corentin here. Um, all right, he can I can I can in tandem him to keep him alive. So it's uh, we can always light wave him out as well, just so he doesn't die. Because obviously we're trying to test damage. Okay, so we have two weeks. Let's see what he hits. 182 times two, so 360 damage. That's against a weakness though. All right, so 360. We'll just round to make things easy. And then for Flanagan, he's he's here to Ramparts. Now he could get nuked down himself, so I have to watch out for that. Alright, and then Narv. So Narv actually can't hit something yet. <laughs> now, if he was if he was more forward, maybe he could, so I'll, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and light wave him, I guess. Um, or maybe we can use Fleet Footed. Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's just give everyone so I can get Corentin out potentially. Alright, so let's get Narv in there. Let's get him. He's potentially dead. If I do this. He can oh well he can catch a heal by Medina. Alright. So he has fire damage increase, so let's see what he hits. Alright, 192 times 2. So what is that? 380? So 380. Alright, so that's the first turn. Oh, we got X-Harm going in. Alright, then Frederica. Shall we be able to kill these? Very likely. 269. Holy crap. Dude, the damage difference between these units... Like, Frederica just does way much, way more damage. So, two... It was like 270 times 2. So, what is that? 540? Jesus. Yeah, Frederica, honestly, she might be S-tier. I put her at A, but I think her damage is potentially S tier, because if you look at her stats, she has higher magic attack than most units, and with two magic bracelets, plus clear weather, and just, like, scorch damage up in this case, she can hit really hard. So, she's she's potentially better than most of these units. 
Alright, we'll just have Cordelia run up here. And we didn't even need to heal because we just nuked everything. Uh, we're not even going to battery because they're all, they have full stuff, so. Alright, and then Picoletta. Look at this movement. This is ridiculous. Her movement's insane. Um, I think I can hit two things, actually. Yeah, she can hit two things. So that's resistant, so let's see if we Ice Stone him. So we can target weaknesses with Picoletta. That's one of the big upsides of her. Um, so let's see what we hit. It's going to be kind of hard to tell what the damage is, so I'm going to try to see both of it. 85 and 140. Uh, so 220. Uh, so plus 220. So Picoletta is now at 500 damage. Total. She's pretty competitive, honestly, so far. She's she's dealing competitive damage. Her first turn was competitive with Corintin and Nar, but it was a little bit less damage. I'm not doing Deathless on this. I'm just playing normally. Uh, we might as well just move up the shielding stance. That's fine. Get his proc. Uh, Corintin. So I'm going to try to have him hit two targets. If not... Everything's too split apart. Well, actually, I can do this. <laughs> I don't want to do this, but I can do this. I could Icy Breath both of these and put him in extreme danger, but I think I'll just have him single target Frosty Fetters for lethal. All right, 246. So, Corintin, so plus 240. He is now at 600. 600 total. And then we'll go over the totals in a minute. Uh, he has ramparts. He might as well just hang out with some of these. He's probably going to hit with a spell. Yeah. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> That's why he needs Serenoa to shielding stance him. So that he can tank magic. Uh, but luckily for us, we have a spike healer. Alright, and then Narv. Okay, he's not going to be able to hit multiple things. So I'm going to try to move up. Uh, look for his highest damage. Let's see, he's resistant. He's weak to fire. All right, this does 293, 267. Okay, so that's a little bit more. What about Mystic Beam? Dang, Mystic Beam does less than Spark. It's wild. All right, we'll Spark him. All right, 218 on Narv. Uh, Narv is now up to... So we'll just say... We'll just round up to 220. He's now up to 500 damage. Okay, so, so far, here's everyone's damage after two turns. Uh, Frederica, 540 damage. Actually, she's just taken one turn so far. She did 540 damage in a single turn. Um, Alright, here's her second turn. She's going to have to move up. And then, if she's going to get the highest damage she can get, it'll be Blazing Chains. For 328. Alright, so plus 328. We'll say 330. Uh, she is at... 8... 70 damage so all right so here are the damage values for every unit after two turns essentially uh, frederica has 870 damage dealt narv has 500 picoletta has 500 Corintin has 600 I'll do my so something to keep in mind picoletta is about to go again too and she might start getting double turns because of her fast speed yeah she's starting to get fast turns all right so medina no one really needs battery except for Corentin, so we will we'll give him battery. Let's give him one. Because Picoletta's not getting damage boosted or any other buffs from anyone else, so them getting a battery, it would be like giving her some, like, you know, I need to give her some buff to make it even in this case. Uh, but being able to target weaknesses is pretty good. So we can only really... We can hit two things. Honestly, with Picoletta, I don't feel like it's as dangerous for her to move in and to do crazy stuff. So let's see if she can get... Okay, she can't hit two. Um, so she'll move up to, like, here. And then Ice Stone this guy. So let's see what she hits on him. All right, 141. All right, so she is up to... Uh, 640. All right, Corintin. I don't want to put him in danger, so I'm just going to have him hit something. Like Frosty Fighters. Yeah, we'll do this. We'll rotate him in. Frosty Fighters, this guy. 246. Okay, so Corintin's at 840. And he did get batteried. So if he didn't get batteried, he could have thrown a stone, potentially. All right, Sarah Noah, just do whatever you got to do. Leave me with no recourse. 
Cordelia can heal, that's fine. Let's pass on Medina. Alright. Narv. He can hit a single target. He'll spark. 187. Uh, Narv is at... I'll just add, we'll just round it up to 90. 690 damage dealt. Frederic is about to go. She should be able to nuke this guy down. Yeah, Blazing Chains. Plus 220. So Frederica is at 1,090 damage dealt. It'd be really nice if there were like post, <laughs> like post game stats, to uh, to check these. Okay, so Piccoletta can target a weakness here. She can target this guy. 141, putting her at 780. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna see, like we're gonna finish this match and just see how how much damage everyone deals. Uh, the thing is, if I give, I guess I could battery current in. It, it's a, it's almost like cheap though, because like he's just getting like like all these units are just getting battery, so it, it definitely pushes him over to be better. Um, maybe for going for damage, well, icy tomb. All right, two twenty-two. All right, Corintin. Plus, we'll just say two twenty. He's now at. 1060, which isn't bad. Sarah Noah goes. Piccoletta gets to go again. These dudes balled up. Now, let me check for their weaknesses if they have any. Okay, they don't have weakness. So we just want to hit for the highest we can. So I guess just like. Oh, wait, we can only hit one <laughs> because of the height. So if we wanted to go for just straight up damage. Uh, Thunderstone would be it. Alright, 102. We'll just say 100. So she Piccoletta is at 880. Narv's turn. Uh, he can't Scorch both of these, unfortunately. But he can Spark this guy. 200. Alright. Narv is at 890. So, so far, honestly, Piccoletta's damage is not very far behind. Uh, Frederica is definitely leading, and then, like, Corintin, but no, she has almost the exact same damage as Narv right now. Uh, we're gonna Scorch, or we're gonna... We'll Blazing Chains this, and then whatever damage it deals will count. Uh, 223. If we were counting actual damage, obviously overkilling things, the damage numbers would be different. Uh, but right now, I'd say... Frederica is at like 1,310. So she's definitely out damaging everything. And this is an edit, or this is a map with like few enemies. So, you know, if, if Corinthian was glacial mooning, it would be a completely different story. All right, so we'll Thunderstone again. Another 100 damage for Piccoletta. She is now at 980. Uh, Corintin, it looks like he might have a dead turn unless I battle cry him. So I'll have him move up. I don't think this boss can one hit me, but it might be able to, so we'll find out. Uh, he'll icy breath this. Or he's resistant. I guess, I guess I'll come over here and nuke this down. Frosty fetters. 160. Alright. Corintin is now at. Uh, 1,220. Okay, that was that's with catching battery three times too. <laughs> so like, if it, if another unit was doing something, that could have been other turns spent somewhere else. Uh, and then Narv is actually out. He'll have to use a stone in this case because he can't catch battery. So he'll just use like a thunderstone, I guess. All right, plus 87 on Narv. We'll just say plus 90. Uh, putting him at 980, which is the exact same amount as Piccoletta right now, <laughs> who just doesn't need a battery, so, yeah. All right, and then Piccoletta's, so, this is a dead turn because she can't hit. We're trying to just keep this as, like, accurate as possible to just a normal game. 
I think he's weak to fire. Yep, he's weak to fire. All right, let's see. Uh, 631 versus 641. All right, so a little bit more damage. So we'll hit him with a large fire stone. All right, 134 damage. Uh, so we'll say 130. Uh, this puts Piccoletta at... Uh, 1,110. So she's starting to get closer to Corentin's damage. But look at her mo look at her position right now. Her mobility and range is definitely not nothing. In this game, like, if you're attacking or defending, th that range is ridiculous. Alright, Corentin can't even... I don't even think he can hit this guy. He just straight up can't even hit him. This is a dead turn. So, like, if you're attacking or if you're pushing, like, these mages... And also, it could be dangerous to do this, because he could get one-shot by, like, the enemy mage. We'll do this just to see what happens. Uh, I guess he could icy... Yeah, he could, he could, um... Shield device himself. To be safe. Let's see. Okay, so he did... I'll count that. I'll count that damage on Corentin. 100 damage counterattack. Uh, Corentin's at 1320. So that actually wasn't a dead turn. He was actually able to... Get in some chip damage, that's pretty good. And then... She can just do whatever, it doesn't matter. Just pass these turns. Alright, Frederica probably will deal an insane amount of damage to this guy. This will She's definitely gonna get damage carry. 302? Dude, Frederica is at 1,610 damage right now. She is definitely in the lead. And then Piccoletta. Another AoE. Another 134. Uh, putting her, we'll say 130, putting her at 1, 2, 4, so 1240 damage. So she's, she's like, catching up to Corentin. Uh, Narv, alright, Narv is gonna have lethal, I think. With Scorch. Yeah. 185, alright. This is the first test. Plus 185. Uh, so Narv's damage is 1,165. All right, so here are the damage totals. And my math could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's fine. Yeah, 16 plus 100. Yeah, okay, so here's here's what I have for all the damage of all these units in this particular match. Frederica did 1,610 damage. Clearly, so, so there's some things to consider about this too. She was attacking weaknesses right so this particular map there are a lot of fire weak enemies because they're ice mages so this is an exception to the average her average is usually closer to other units but in this case she was able to deal more damage by like you know 300 damage or so uh, narv had the lowest damage of 1165 piccoletta had the second lowest damage of 1240 and then corinton had the second highest damage 1000 uh, 320. So, Piccoletta straight up out damaged Narv for 0 TP. And if you look at the positions of the units, she was able to grab high ground and just like she's safer to push with because she has higher durability. So, just for like one to one damage, generally Piccoletta will out damage Narv and be pretty close to Corentin and Frederica. Now, obviously, if Corentin's spamming Glacial Moon, that changes things, because Glacial Moon can deal absurd damage if there's a lot of enemies balled up. However, if there are only two to three enemies balled up, Glacial Moon is just, it's just probably comparable to this. Because he needs to be hard batteried in order to spam Glacial Moon to begin with. So it's not, it is good, but it's not like the best thing ever. And if enemies are spread out, it's not that good. It's just decent. It's still good, but it's not like absurdly overpowered or something. Uh, but yeah, you can see from this test, on this map, trying to hit as many enemies, targeting weaknesses, playing as optimally as possible with each mage. Uh, Piccoletta was not far behind actual mages, and she actually outdamaged Narv, which is why I put him at B tier when I originally did a tier list uh, for him. Uh, yes, he has range plus one, but she has passive further range and better mobility, so she can effectively reach way further than Narv, and she has three climb, which is massive. Uh, the difference between two and three climb is often the difference in mobility and opening an access to or opening access to another route so huge 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 difference uh, but piccoletta is actually a really good damage unit you can see like she can target weaknesses 
She has really good range. She has really good durability. She can drop a decoy, and the decoy will do damage. The decoy will deal like ones and twos, which isn't the damage it's going to be dealing on uh, New Game Plus level 50. But what it will do is it'll set up follow-up attacks when it, wherever possible with uh, Ball Toss. And when it dies, it'll deal around 100 damage to enemies around it. So it can it can still deal damage. So even And also the other upside with Piccoletta, just spamming stones is she doesn't use any TP. So if she ever wants to like cast a decoy, every turn she's just spamming damage stones, she can always just make a decoy. And you don't usually lose out on the damage, assuming that the decoy blows up near enemies, because then the decoy will still contribute to her overall damage. So she's actually quite a good unit. Um, I put her at A tier, because decoy using decoy properly is huge, and her, her base stats are really good. And the, the, like the other thing to consider too is like like spells and stones are 100 percent accurate, so she can never miss. Um, but she's also six movement and three jump, which is pretty good. And like you know, she can teleport herself, so she can put a decoy on high ground and then switch places with it. So she can actually climb extreme heights by doing this. So that's another useful thing. It's very niche, but it's something she can do that is good. So it's just another thing to consider. But yeah, she's she was just like 80 damage behind uh, Corentin. I mean, he did 80 more damage than her, and he also got batteried three times specifically, and I even uh, battle cried him. So it, it's just so much easier just to use Piccoletta, to be honest, in most cases. Uh, Corentin, obviously, with Glacial Moon and en enemy density, would out damage Piccoletta dramatically, probably deal two times as much damage as her. Uh, but you can see that in your average map where you're just fighting small groups of enemies, you know, <laughs> she can deal competitive damage to mages. So she's definitely a good unit for dealing damage and for off tanking. She's like, I would say she's like 70% damage, 30% tank, where she can, she herself is a little durable. She has a good evasion, good magic defense, good physical defense, good health, good mobility, um, really good range. Uh, she can she can hit things that mages can't hit because of her mobility and range combo. So the, and, and her durability, she can push into positions that mages would not would never dream of pushing into without like a Flanagan helping them or some kind of you know Gila Rez or something to help help them tank. So pretty good unit, competitive with mages. I can test this on more maps, but like from what I've found from using Piccoletta, she can deal really consistent damage and is really good. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for checking this out. If you like this, definitely like the video and subscribe. And drop a comment, and I'll see you in the next one.